Ah, oh, what an awesome day. Slept all afternoon, nobody bothered me. Just even, just kind of old man sleeping. Dreamed like crazy. That means a real critical neurochemical is, is that I have plenty of it. And I'm, uh, this is really kind of a summation of the last, I think the last investigation I need to make on Hobo Shoestring, a.k.a. Mark Nichols. Uh, Nicholas. No nickel having. Uh, I put up the Bill Burr rant. It was, you one bridge heaven. <laughs> this Philadelphia only has one bridge. This morning stuff started coming up on my feed. I'm sure I know I've got some infiltrators left in there and I don't care if my views go down because I'm not talking about your beloved shoestring. And I think I may have gotten the last channel that had, uh, it's actually I've already reported to his first 14 videos. He had, had he's been apparently doing on screen capture or whatever, cause that would leave a trail if he's, <coughs> of course you can always use, um, uh, you know, PayPal, you know, I could always, but anyway, Adele came off and I kind of thought that was his, the guy who ran his merchandise shop and it was only about three minutes. It looked like there wasn't going to be any, you know, songs and praise thereof. And he brought up a couple of interesting facts and he was kind of pushing for, and so I went to checking and Sure enough, because he was actually kind of pushing towards more donations and said, you can sign the guest book that, uh, what's it's called, uh, Legacy or something. If they're for only $69.95, you can, and so far, two people have signed the GoFundMe account, which she's calling, they may need to stay here for a whole year till this is cleaned up. I'm going to please stick around. I'm going to explain why Mark Nichols' body was burned immediately. You don't do autopsies on HIV people. You may carefully draw some blood for toxicology. But generally, the rule here in Texas is if you're found dead and it looks like natural causes, you go straight to the fucking crematorium. And that's what happened to him. That's why there's no list of memorial service and stuff. Is because uh, you know, all the oh, and the hospital was kind enough to donate the urn. Wasn't that sweet? Of course they are. Everybody loved Hobo Shoestring. <laughs> yeah, that confirms it. it ain't no kind of liver thing or right? he was taking Big Tarry. That means he's HIV positive. That means as soon as they recovered his body and stuff, it went into the, a morgue. It probably did never, uh, the only nearby morgue would probably be the hospital he was booted out of for drug seeking, trying to get something to knock himself out. Because I told you, that's the end stage of alcoholism. You get to where you don't sleep. And shit, it's like a, just a perpetual hangover. And uh, I checked, and it was the my best of my memory. The last time I checked, about a week ago, when they had upped it from twenty thousand to twenty-five thousand, it, it was it was like seventeen thousand eight hundred ninety dollars, and now it's just a little over. It's like eighteen thousand and twenty-five dollars been almost no more donations now that they see that anybody with any rational mind is you can tell that the, the uh, nickel sister is doing the gonna live in his townhouse by the lake and make sure everything's taken care of and the statues built and all that shit that's not going to happen all these people just trying to get you talking about chasing clouds 
uh, it, the old saying was everybody and his brother and his dog is trying to get in on this shit just to get a, these channels that you know been there for you know 15 years and they've had like you know 739 views and they're trying hard to do shit rail fan shit and just, they're not and really nobody's watching them and there's still people like myself I really didn't even comment this morning. Don't need to. There was, you know, I mean, you people that are attached to this, you're just a hobo sexual. You really are. I mean, I've never really seen such homoeroticism except for like sports stars, you know, where you really, people, guys that you sit there and you're playing with your junk all through the game, you know, scratching it, moving your testicles around, you scrotum them around. Yeah, and being a big, you know, yeah, living free. He was a real man of the Iron Road and all this stuff. He was a true American. You know, fuck no, he wasn't. He was a criminal. So it appears to be dead in the water. My analysis was correct. Uh, so, and see, nobody wants to explain that the hospital made the decision. It's, it's a law here in Texas. If you're found dead, of apparently... And then those poor people that went to rescue his body out of that Christian Jewish respect for the body and stuff, they have to wait another, now, another five more weeks before they can be tested for HIV, Hep C, or whatever else he may have had. That body was burnt. And what pisses me off was he, that he was already found when according to one party who's supposed to be before Mary Nichols was up all night screaming to Pflugerville PD to come down and investigate me. when they knew exactly where I was at the whole time. I'm a, I want to remind you, I'm a cripple. I'm in a wheelchair. I rarely walk. I've been sitting right here for, you know, mm, it's going on like 10 months now. And it may soon be over. I may finally be able to, you know, if I can't find housing that has windows that open, that's a must for me. Either that or it has to be as clean and odor free and stuff and chemical free as that hotel I stayed in the other night, night before last. So that's kind of the end of it. All you people on the bill statue, somebody's going, there should be a statue of him in every railroad station around the country. Like he's the ideal hobo. The, the hobo that you people are trying to put forth, that myth of the hardworking man that's traveling by the trains that he can't afford to pay passage on, looking for work, always carries his work gloves with him and shit, showing the, the, the uh, ho hobo horseshoe and stuff, the hobo swag, they call it in Australia. He had tons of fans and... The one guy actually did this boring. I did watch that just because I could tell. I just clicked on it for a minute. That it looked like he had some sort of analysis of the dead. No, he just really was uh, clout chasing. Had a kind of, and he had all like the three D uh, uh, Google satellite image. You know, kind of. He's trying to explain the whole thing. He had been super investigating, just fascinated with this case for weeks. Been compiling this this computer uh, generated uh, you know 3D kind of uh, you know uh, compendium of facts of all everything surrounding Mark's death but the one thing you can't get over is that everybody's waiting on the autopsy to see if he was murdered nope You know, I knew a guy up in Maine who used his HIV positive status, his bodily fluids and blood and shit as defenses. He went around being a complete asshole. That's one of the reasons I got regularly got tested because every time I went for several, about three summers in a row, every time I went up to Maine, I had to fucking knock the shit out of fucking, you know, bust up a guy named Robert Laplace, who probably by now somebody's finished that fucker off and just tossed him in the fucking Penobscot River where the eels will 
strip all the flesh off the bones, nothing's going to float to the top. <laughs> and shit, I remember one day he was at a location. He grabbed a city worker. Good looking woman. Mm -hmm. City employee grabbed her, got up on her. He thought he was God's gift to women. He deliberately infected himself with HIV. He's from Boston. Despite the French name, he may have been born in Maine, but he was in Boston. He was used to hang out with the prostitutes, and that's probably both male and female. And they, you know, shoot. He'd shoot up with them and shit like that, and use dirty needles. He deliberately, because he knew the rule, which is the minute you come up HIV positive, you get SSI to cover your medical expenses to control the the AIDS epidemic. And I frequently had to get blood to blood exchange, you know, busting his fucking face up. He really did. He one time actually hit on my girlfriend and shit. Yeah, I'm going to fucking lay you out, motherfucker. Nobody's watching. The minute you start fucking hitting on my fucking girlfriend, I'm going to fucking paint the shit out you. There's going to be blood everywhere. You know, I'd always have to wait. I'd wait to give it a good couple months. And there's that's just one of many. And I uh, spent a lot of time in Maine around a crowd that's just fucking full of that hep uh, C and shit like that. The cancer causing variety. So all you people that thought that there was going to be an autopsy, there was no fucking autopsy. They had his records. He was fucking screaming fucking hot with fucking HIV. The victorious ass, part of the problem is Big Tarvey, as I pointed out, is marketed. I learned that during the cold weather. I swear to God, I'd get on these channels, and, you know, they're doing three or four commercials in the commercial breaks, and one of them would be Big Tarvey, where they always showed kind of one would be kind of a, a more prissy, feminine one than a little one that's a little not so. And uh, kind of the, the message would be, I'm Big Tarvey. I, we have Big Tarby now. And so now I can go back to, to, you know, sucking it like I'm angry at it and or packing his fudge and with no chance of transmitting it to my boyfriend, husband, whatever. That's really what Big Tarby's, I told you, he mentioned it in, when he was there putting, showing all this merchandise and stuff, his hammock and the hammock, that's all Walmart stuff. It's not, and the hammock, uh, mosquito screen over the top and kind of stuff it's i could get that whole deal that he had that's one of the things he was doing he was one of the last videos i watched a few minutes of and stuff it's uh and i noted the exact moment i actually stopped went back and listened repeatedly to make sure he was saying bick tarvey Despite his lack of dent, you know, dentition, there are these glottal dental, glotto dental glotto sounds that you really need teeth to do. And he's been training that upper lip to act as his teeth for a long time. And so there's your answer. You're never going to know exactly what he died of because he was. Uh, you know, it's actually HIV is it's almost like being a leper. You know, it's are you going to do an autopsy on somebody's body is rotting, rotting from the leprosy bacillus and shit? You know, it's so and the and the hospital is so kind to furnish the urn. You know, urns don't cost that much. The one I bought for my mother was actually a hand carved from a solid block of wood from Nepal. And it didn't cost me that much. It cost me less than a hundred bucks. And it was against my sister had my mother cremated because she was too lazy. She was too, she wanted my mother burned. It's kind of some kind of revenge for not you know, uh, you know, for my mother, you know, just 
you know, for one thing, my mother was a little angry at her for hiding one of her grandchildren for 33 fucking years. She could have come home pregnant. We wouldn't. She went to one of them Ed and the Gladney homes for unwed mothers and stuff like that. And she left the adoption open. And that kid came looking. And he's a complete bastard. I don't mean just in the legal sense. He is a fucking bastard. We haven't talked in a long time because he started acting. He had that jackass gene came out really strong in him. That Lawson Maddox jackass gene that I, I've talked about before. My siblings got it pretty strong. I didn't get it. I don't, you know, just, you know. So that's pretty much it. It's the, I have so much has been coming up because it, there's still link, you know. Actually, every time the, the fucking, the guy who pushed Mark, weak ass Mark Nichols to the edge, you know, to go to drinking and, and stuff like that and uh, finally fucking you know take a dive off the pier a long walk off a short pier you know he's every time he's he released another i may have mentioned it this morning he i found now i gotta go back and check here a little bit under clips to see if he's but i think youtube has has caught the fact that he uh he cloned my youtube address uh, and has created has created a TKK channel for behavioral modification, uh, you know, neurology and you know, whatever. And I snagged. I got the first fourteen he put up there, which he had spent months collecting and altering and editing and photoshopping and shit and just obsessed with me oh god that guy you got to be gay dude i'm sorry it's uh, nobody you know gets that obsessed unless you're fucking queer for me i mean really i wouldn't want to spend my whole i hate having to review my videos to catch the little was well, like the last one uh, i said uh something that was uh, should have been a misstated made one slight misstatement in a, in a lengthy uh presentation there and i wish i you know it you know doesn't matter it's most people would notice that oh uh, yeah i think i'll have another cup of coffee actually i noticed that uh you guys recall milk is full of tryptophan and every time I eat a little tiny little can of them, that sweetened condensed milk and stuff, I get sleepy and I was kind of exhausted between for days of preparation of going to see a doctor and having to be really on point, point with the doctor and not push it. And it's warm weather, the winds are calming down so I'm not being buffeted while I'm trying to sleep. Boom, 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 boom. Hate that. So, there's, at the moment, there's no plans for, I think there, there's absolutely no planned memorial for Mark Nichols because the, the Nichols sister who's probably living off the, you know, she's still not working and is living in the townhouse because why not? She paid this month's rent or something. And uh, allegedly, and uh, she's wanting to stay around in Johnson City, and it's and be sure that it's because that's kind of his ultimate. Funny thing, he was actually born in Tyler, Texas, the alleged crepe metal myrtle capital of the world. But there's other plenty of other cities that were been planting tons of crepe myrtle long before. Tyler did. It was just something they came up with. Chamber of Commerce came up with. You can see right here in Houston. I told you there's one spot down on airport. You can tell it's real old. They built a branch of my bank there. And they've got some really massive old crepe myrtles that are huge. I mean, the trunks are, you know, for them to live that age, 
So for them trunks to get that big, it takes a long, it takes a hundred and something years. Grape myrtles are highly desirable because they bloom all summer long. We got three of them here and you can tell that they're, a lot of them are joined at the base that they were two separate plants so they just, they often grow them that way to make sure they have a really blue, large crown. But the way it looks is that I'm getting really the final word on, although should stay, I'm sorry, shoestring. Didn't mean to be, uh, you know, uh, insulting the dead. Yeah, I wouldn't want to insult Adolf Hitler, would I? And it's clear and clear. The more people that comment and come up there, the things they say, that he had really had a, he was definitely encouraged that, that whole, the far right wing, the Jew hating, uh, you know, white supremacy movement and stuff like that. It's it's there for anybody to say it. I bet you somewhere somebody's got pictures of him wearing one of that Nazi helmet, the Nazi helmet that I saw in the. And I'm pretty sure Pork Chop Rides Again is actually like a stolen channel. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure because the 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 channel that let me know that it was there for me to share was a fake channel. And then when I get to this channel, I'm, I'm analyzing and I'm going like, this guy's gay. His, the, his obsession with Judy Garland, him singing karaoke and doing it badly. And there's a little Nazi helmet in the, in the corner and stuff like that. There's, uh, I wouldn't want to ever hang around at pork chop rides again. It's. And that's one of the was one of the giveaways is the when he starts making up fake like Italian names, he likes to do it like he did in the, some of the titling and on that channel. The guy appearing on that channel might be dead by now, or he's lost. You know. You know the funny thing is that nobody's really been stealing from my older channels and stuff it, it wouldn't matter because i'm not going to get notification that told you every time you lose control of a channel and stuff like that you can't you know i'm not on a pc i don't have my password stored away and shit like that and i just don't care i move on it's uh you know after i lost control of my original well no i managed to recover it for a while and then i just created a whole new one uh Armadillo, the Armadillo channel, based on a picture. Yeah, I did have that one saved somewhere. It was and for a while. I had both channels. Yeah, I control of both channels. But then, you know, when they see you coming in with a Google, fight you so hard, you have to really create a new, a new email and a whole new Google account. You know, if they don't trust, it's, but if you have a PC, man, it's easy to con YouTube. I've, I've had a laptop. It was like a 450 LS. It was a, the satellite, a good, especially for the price. And the next thing I know, they're selling them. They had kind of overproduced them. It was an excellent laptop and shit. And, about the time that I got it all set up and everything, I just decided because I had friends and family that were still urging me to go on and create a, like a science channel and continue to educate on YouTube. And then I found out that when it comes to cannabinoid science, I'm mostly only attracting hippies and the people that think that they know everything about cannabinoid science, you know, there are people that are fucking you know, 30 years younger than me and don't really know shit and stuff. They're not going to listen to me and shit like that. And hippies don't want to, you know, they'll always want those quick answers, you know, man. You can't stand handle anything complicated, man. No, man, you didn't discover that. Rick Simpson in Arizona discovered it. I've got his, I bought his Phoenix Tears. 
Remember, social media isn't about social media. It's a, this is merchandising here. Chip is, I'm not selling me. I'm not Hobo Shoestring. Hobo Shitstein was selling his, pimping his ass out here. Is created a whole different character than his original character. The links are probably still up on my community post to go see the old videos. Because somebody even took over his... I think I know who it is, too. I mean, at least in general, it's the guy who egged on this bum fight. And he got what he wanted. He wanted one or both of us dead. Sorry, I'm not that susceptible to stress. You have to really, you know... You got to do a lot more than that, buddy. A little bit of name calling and shit like that, a little agitation. Uh uh, that ain't going fucking. You know, I used to do a deal every day with two nationalities that everybody, and from my own observations, everybody told me you can't trust them motherfuckers. And I'll not mention them because nobody's been able to make a valid complaint against this channel yet. And that one comment that I had removed, I'd never commented on that channel. That's how good he was. He managed to get the the complaint come back to me. And yet, mm -mm. the minute that Facebook loved, uh, said, you, if you wish to, you may edit this comment and it'll stay. And... How can I edit something that I can't even, you know, it didn't even bother. I mean, that's all they're going to do is delete one comment. That's all I've had so far. It's, so that's kind of a summary about instant cremation. And I find it really annoying that, that everybody in Johnson City already knew that he was dead. The fishermen and shit already found it. They'd already recovered the body on Friday the 5th. And I had the cops coming up here at sunrise on the 6th. It was kind of amusing. Especially in joking. There goes a spider mite crawling across my damn screen. But at least I slept good because even the bugs dropping on me didn't bother me today. I was just needed... And that, a good dose of concentrated condensed milk like that, you know, really carries a, enough tryptophan to make serotonin, 5-hydroxy tryptophan. <clears throat> this guy that's, and I can tell by his dialect that he was Canadian, and that he had some contact with the Nichols family or something. It's that, but in seven days, donations of what started as 10 that went to 20 that went to 25, it stopped at just a little over 18,000 bucks. You're done. To tell you the truth, I think that thousand dollar anonymous donation, donation, this is my allegation. I'm alleging that Mary Nichols made it herself maybe on upon advice is that she could take out a thousand and then make a thousand dollar donation real big and stuff make it appear take a lot of little because they're all pretty small donations they rarely went more than 25 to 50 bucks 100 bucks is a bit to show that you know you know because that would always show up you know they show the biggest donations or whatever up there front and it was $1,000 anonymous. You had everybody else that donated, including Jose, Josefina Sanders, donated 25 bucks of somebody else's money that she mooched on one of her begging marathons. Oh, my God. Sometimes I watch that just because it's so fucking cringe from start to finish. And I'm not the only one that can see that Jose Sanders doesn't have a Y chromosome. 
and she's got people actually helping her. I think it's just a, a she's got apparently some woman really handling all the the media manipulations where she gets to block everybody. She could she's got it right there where she can if she don't like the way things are going, she sits there reading all the comments. And if she don't like it, she just signals to her moderator to kill all, erase all the contents. And then you can, even I can bring them back. I believe comments that I've, you know, because it offers me the chance to view. And I'm going like, why would I want to view comments that I've, already, I've blocked? Why would I want to look at them again? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Everybody's trying to bump up their own YouTube channel by holding little memorials or something like that or sing these songs and stuff and it's just dropping, dropping, dropping. And that poor sucker, unless he borrowed all that from some historical society or something, he spent a thousand, two thousand bucks to put together a hobo horseshoe, hobo swag bag and stuff. Then it goes to great length explaining what is essentially, you know, the mess kit, which has been around for a long time, still exists in camping and stuff. It's, but he wanted to be totally authentic and. I don't think he got, he's put all that money into it and time into it. And I don't think he's gotten more than 75, 80,000 views. That's not even going to cover the cost of acquiring all those, those items. And uh, even kind of a hobo kind of a costume, but a classy, you know, Civil War veteran type hobo kind of So yeah, it looks like it's dead in the water. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I told you it somebody already told me this. And I apologize to one lady and stuff like that. Her comment should still be up there. Yeah. Cause she told me that you know it's exactly where he had lived. She had known and that he was HIV that he had actually had AIDS. Yeah, well, she's there's a fine line between HIV positive and AIDS, but this is kind of a final way of explaining. Uh, you know, all you got is like a jar full of ashes to worship and pray in front of and worship. You know, all you losers who, yeah. You know, never slept inside of a boxcar. I did it for about a six or eight week period when I had a nice little A-frame built on the fucking Penobscot River. as the beautiful. I used to take my girlfriend there and stuff, man. She would, she was, uh, she had a you know, place, but she, you know, we'd stay overnight and, and I just let her give me, fillet me a lot. She loved doing that geisha girl thing. That was Oh God, that one was, one was costing me about seven thousand bucks a month with her fucking, her expensive tastes, and she, she, you know, she wanted all the real, yeah. You know. And when you're doing me that good, yeah, I've got the money, yeah. This stuff, I'll feed you the finest food out there. You know, as a matter of fact, it was, I lost about twenty pounds that summer because I was active and shit. And she put on about twenty pounds and got in trouble with her mother-in-law who was the grant writer for the city of Bangor and she who's actually has the custody of her daughter who turned out to be you know, a, actually I saw her when she was about 14 she was a beautiful girl then she started getting thick and uh, they got plenty of thick whip. and she for you know to be kind of like hip and cool she started 
dating only black dudes because the black dudes could come up with the drugs even if they had to steal them if they had to rob somebody else so by the time she got towards in the high school because I kind of keep track of them on Facebook you know it's her life was over Maine is one of the most racist states that there is I mean they're you know yep it's one of the whitest and most racist states in the in the union they keep the hipsters that have moved there since then they keep going Maine is not racist and they've gone out of their way to invite all these fake Somali asylum seekers up there and provide them give them the finest housing hotels and shit while the natives are fucking out on the street and having to stay in this stinking old shelter on Oxford Street there in Portland when you get around like the the city market thing there this big complex in the big downtown parking garage and shit like that if you get towards the edge of it or if you're downwind from it you can smell the fungal the tinny and other strains and mold it coming out of that building it really needs to just be burnt down it stinks it reeks it shit it's not the people it's the building itself that they never really clean you think that they're not going to be jealous of people that essentially got maid service and shit like that or being given free credit cards and shit like that you know iPhones so they can call up you know have pizza delivered even though they're being served and cooked like in the in the uh, auditorium at the cross center or something like that and at the and it, they were occupying all the hotels and even there and outlying suburbs and stuff there's a lot of resentment to but then the governor that took over from the Republican governor has been inviting them and Ethan Strimling, he essentially lost, you know, as mayor of of Portland, Maine, because he was going out of his way to invite people that were actually crossing and being tested and stuff in Texas. He was inviting them up to Portland, Maine, and they were just treating these people like kings while they crap all over their own native population. It's ridiculous. It really is. And uh, it cost them, you know, that the and even the the female mayor that followed him really didn't want the job. I think she was a nice Jewish lady, and, but a liberal, you know, super liberal. And she, see, they have like they have kind of like the board of supervisors kind of construct, like San Francisco. It's and now it's almost all minorities. If you include women as a minority, which is not true, you know, the people that run Portland, Maine, or, you know, almost all is now got to have the Indian, you know, the inclusionary kind of, and you got to have the, you know, the mandatory uh, black woman and then black man and then uh, a Muslim and then a Indian, the Wabanaki, all this shit. And... (laughs) Portland's a fucking mess. It's rapidly becoming the San Francisco of the East. Well on its way there. So that's pretty much it. You HIV positive? You'll probably stay inside the body bag. They'll probably draw some blood very carefully, send it to the lab for toxicology to see how much it, whether it was, you know, you know, cause they need to come up with a cause of death when they probably right off the bat is going to say, well, he drowned, obviously. <laughs> Imagine a guy who's a known stumbling fall down drunk about getting him a townhouse on it. They did show it. And it's like I described at Cass Comerford. It's a row house like in England, but not, I don't think it was made out of brick. It was some kind of paneling or some shit on the 
and instead of being like a duplex or a quadruplex or something it was just a long row of and that's what we hear in in America or even Texas we call townhouses when you have shared walls to make the construction less expensive I had a woman when I was on English on English Facebook and stuff she's going like why do they have all the why don't they have any space back between the houses and stuff because it would cut down on the drama and stuff and I go because it makes when you share a wall just think about it you're reducing you know probably 15 or 20 percent of the construction costs building two separate walls just to separate residences in a tiny country like england and stuff like that is yeah yeah you know. london used to always be you know shared walls and shit new york i think was the, that way a lot anyway i've call, covered the the major points is that uh, you got one of the Mary Nichols is apparently stayed behind the other sister went home realizing that yeah it really it's not going to go the, they thought he was good they were going to have a fucking Mark Nichols day and a fucking tribute parade and all this shit they're really delusional family uh, she thinks she's going to sit there and milk this uh There still remains the question nobody's come up with is, you know, from what I can see and tell is that his son died a long time ago. How did the kid die? And that's the only mystery left remaining here is, you know, because I had somebody ask me, what happened to his son, Connor? I think it was Connor. I can't even remember the guy's real name. He's trying to erase, been erase Connor Nichols, or something like that. What happened to him? Negligent mother, just as, as just as the negligent father. Look at it this way: Did did Mark Nichols ever pay child support? Huh? You can't slander or libel somebody who's exposed himself as a negligent dad, uh, theft of service, thieving, trespassing, uh, you know, a guy who considered himself a gangster and stuff up until about nine years ago when he decided to sober up a little bit, got some advice on how to make money on YouTube before he was just shooting videos if you think mine are shaky, he'd, he'd be walking on that gravel shit and it's all over the... That still sticks in my mind is that that unmarked big, you know, it's like a gallon, two gallon bag of shit that was sent to me. And then that weird t-shirt in it, like I ain't going to catch that symbolism of first the upright cross is smaller and then the bigger Christian cross upside down. And shit, and I still I didn't do a Google image search on it. It was some kind of like satanic worship T-shirt or something. I just threw it away the other day after I used it to keep my shoes from getting money. Which, by the way, the shoes came out pretty freaking clean. If you can see them, they scrubbed up real easy. And I got a pair that now. Has a little more wear on them, but it's that's it. I've gone 45 minutes here explaining that it's not going to happen. You know, you got this, they're trying to paint this picture that everybody loved Mark Nichols. No, not even other hobos. And that there was going to be all kind of statues built and shit like the Bear Bryant or some shit like that or I think even Gene Stalin's got him a statue built that's what an egomaniac that fucker is you can see what I have to say about him in my uh, last channel 
and uh, yeah, I, based on all the evidence, he committed murder and got away with it. Just because somebody said that he said something about his son that has Down syndrome. So, so much for the shit stain. Dear shit stain, you have been wa washed out of the drawers of life, and now you shall be tossed away as ashes. Yeah, there ain't going to be no monuments or statues and shit. You can tell that in six days when a GoFundMe thing completely loses momentum, that that's it. Yeah, it's over. You know, if you come on there showing any kind of a picture, like a sick, I have a sick child, or my, I ran up five thousand dollars saving my little doggy. Boom! You get like, you can ask for five thousand, you'll get eight thousand dollars within twenty-four hours. As a matter of fact, I used to peruse through there looking, and I did. It was actually an Australian couple who wanted to take their their child on a great adventure before she died of a brain tumor and stuff. She, they wanted to take her to Disneyland, the original, then Disney World in Paris. And then since he already had been accepted at some university in France and stuff like that, they just wanted to give, they were only asking for $50,000. And so I flagged and reported that account because no child with a brain tumor, because when you're whether you're climbing a mountain or you get into an airplane that's going to spend right off the bat 18, like 18 hours in the fucking air, you see cabin pressures are about the same as that, you know, it's actually 8,500 feet. It's down to about 10 pounds PSI. And in cases like that, especially if they're rapid, your brain swells when you're young and shit. You can, but if you're older, if your brain shrinks a little bit, actually I've seen all my images. My brain hasn't shrunk. When you're young, if you go from low altitude and climb, start climbing up into high altitude, that's when you start getting headaches and shit from your brain swelling. There was no way that any neurologist and oncologists would permit that child to travel. And I exposed them as just putting on it. They knew the girl would be dead by the time they landed in LA. And then they'd have all that money left to go party all over America and Europe before he settles down to going to school in a, in a socialist country. And then maybe, you know, cause he had a student's visa and all this shit and boom, I was successful. They deactivated that account. When you do that successfully, that means all the money put into that GoFundMe goes back to the people who donated it. It's boom, electronically back into their, the account it came from. I was just doing it to, looking for bullshit. And there were so many scams on there. GoFundMe was a great source of amusement and shit. All you had to do was have like a dog wearing one of them cones, you know, protective cones so they wouldn't chew on their stitches. Boom, that's a quick five to seven thousand bucks overnight if you wrote a good sob story and shit like that. But the the uh, Mark Nichols sob story, it kind of petered out. It's done. It's gone. Okay, let's pull this in right at about 50 minutes. They're a little under.